Hello, welcome to ProAmp Solutions. And what I wanted to show today was a demonstration of my B&K Model 747 uh, tube tester and the importance of having such good test equipment. So this particular Model 747 um, I've invested in. I've made a couple small modifications to it. I added an LED here. Uh, and an external fuse uh, for it and I also put a brand new circuit board in it uh, with all new uh, modern components and I keep it calibrated about once a quarter and it is an absolute workhorse for me but I wanted to demonstrate the importance uh, every once in a while you can find or see a tube that is obviously damaged and, and would not work. So this one, the top has been broken off. There's no longer a vacuum in it. And this one visually, you can tell, is, is no longer any good. This particular one, uh, you can see, has had tremendous heat damage. The discoloration of the logo on it. And um, this is a 12AX7. Let's uh, put this in the tester and see what it will do. So as the tube heater element heats up, this will transconduct if it is going to at all. So I can see the needle starting to budge here. Slowly working its way up. And you can see that this one only has about 15% of its dissipation. Uh, obviously uh, shot, uh, overheated, not sure what the nature of what happened in this particular tube. But this one also has visual evidence of, of being extremely hot. Now we'll move into a completely different category. This tube, I cannot discern anything at all visually by looking at it. It looks like a, a brand new tube. Let's put it in the tester and see what happens. Again as the tube heats up it'll begin its transconductance and let's see what this one does. So this one gets up to about 30% of what its transconductance, its amplification factor should be. And again, just looking at this, I have no idea why it's not working like it should. You can't tell visually. Let's try another one. Again, this one looks, again, brand new. Let's see what happens when we put this one in the tester. This one's looking slightly better. Looks like it might get up to about 45% of what its actual amplification factor should be. So as you can see, looking at these really gives you no clue at all, especially if one looks like it's in, you know, no reason to believe it wouldn't be working. Let's look at a brand new JJ ECC 83S is a 12 AX7. So this one's new out of the box. Let's see what happens here. And look at this. It's going to reach 100%, which is exactly what it should be, right on the money. So this particular tube has an amplification factor of 100, exactly where it should be. And again, looking at these tubes, look at just, you can't discern any operable difference or functionality just by looking at two different tubes. So it's imperative uh, that you have good test equipment if you're going to work on tube amps. Um, I don't see any way around this. Take, for example, that one that had an amplification factor of about 40. It would work in the amplifier. It would provide amplification. 
but for example if that was in a, a Marshall MK2 um, you wouldn't have the gain and it, it would just sound terrible uh, relative to what it should sound like because it wouldn't have the drive uh, to drive each successive gain stage so understanding where tubes stand you know if a tube is 85 to 100 percent I'll consider it good and use it and depending on what those factors are I may put them in certain positions in an amp to voice it a certain way uh, also I only looked at the first triode in each one of these tubes that's what this is set for I can test each half uh, let's do that real quick I'll put the JJ in here and we'll review it again so the first uh, half of this is going to dissipate right at 100 percent and we'll change the settings here on the B and K to look at the second triode and you see that it is 98 99 percent so again this is a brand new one out of the box that's what is expected as the result but again looking at tubes and uh, trying to determine amp problems uh, just by looking at them is really futile um, you really need something to quantify your test results and again there's no such thing as mojo in an amp this is all science and the meter doesn't lie most of the time <laughs> make sure they're calibrated and you have a, a vindication that it is uh, working correctly but taking good care of your test instruments and being able to quantify results uh, that you uh, expect and sometimes you expect something and get something else um, but again just reiterating the importance of good test equipment and this is an example of a very versatile there are many tube testers out there I like this one because it's so versatile and we get so many pieces of interesting history come through the shop you know most of the time it's the 12 AX7's the AT's the AU's every once in a while an AY the 6L6s, the EL34s, the KT66s, KT, you know, on and on. But every once in a while you'll get amps with more obscure tubes in them from the 50s and 60s. And I like being able to test and quantify those uh, also. And this particular tester will do it all. So thank you for joining me for this small segment on the B&K Model 747 tube tester and the importance of being able to quantify uh, the state of a tube when you're working on tube amps.